Heard you come aboard last night. Heading for L.A.? Yeah, L.A. Got a few butts here you could break and put in that pipe. Thanks. I'll get along. Where you hail from? Nowhere. <laughs> Me too. How's the country out here? Does it scare you too? No. I'm just passing through. What do you think this is, a Pullman? <laughs> we ain't doing no harm. We're just down on the luck. I got a job waiting for me in L.A. All you guys hand me the same story. You wouldn't take a job if you was offered one. Come on, hit the cinders. No, no, not here. Listen, I can pay my way. I got a book stand to get in my shoe. Don't give him the time of day. Save your shoes for walking. That goes for you too, Bo. Come on, I said out. Keep the second feet to yourself. You're looking for trouble, boy. Start walking. interrupt your party. I want to ride into the next town. Hey. Hey, wake up.
you going, mister? Uh, Minden. Sure must be in a hurry. May I see your driver's license? Follow me, please. R11 to Minden. We're bringing him in. Just one more. Place your hand on the Bible, please. How's this, boys? Fine, hold it. Now we've got to get on with formalities. Welcome to Menden, Mr. Deverman. Thank you. You'd better be as tough as you're cracked up to be, Deverman. I hope you realize that. What are you trying to do, Mr. Whalen? Scare the man? <laughs> uh, from what we've heard of Mr. Deverman, I don't think he scares easily. I hope Joe Manuel has heard of him. And I meet it there, Chief. Mayor Langley's secretary. How do you do? I do hope you like Minden. Thank you. And I am Mayor Jerome Langley. Uh, this is Mr. George Huber, Chairman of the Council, Mr. Roy Whalen, Editor of the Times Union, and Lieutenant Cadell. Pleasure, Chief. We three represent the Citizens Committee for Cleaning Up Minden. Lieutenant Cadell has been acting chief, uh, awaiting your arrival. Gentlemen, I give you your new Chief of Police, Mr. Louis Deverman. As I told your precinct captain in New York, the situation here is extremely grave. You've got your job cut out for you, Mr. Devman. Unless you can give us an honest, efficient police force, men will be taken over entirely by these gangsters. Chief, maybe you've run into Joe Emanuel before. I understand he's from New York, too. No. No, I don't think so. Maybe he's wanted in New York. Could you find that out? Oh, sure. Good idea. I'll, I'll check on it. It's not going to be that easy. Somebody's going to get hurt before this mess is cleaned up. All right, let's swear him in. Place your hand on the Bible, please. Went off very nicely, didn't you? Oh, sure. Went off real fine. Well, at least Mayor Langley didn't make a speech. I suppose there'll be a lot of changes now. Do you really think he'll clean things up, George? Oh, yeah, sure. He's real tough. He'll give Joe Emanuel a dirty look and scream right out of town. I have an idea this is going to be quite a shock to Mr. Emanuel. Why is that? <laughs> Having Deverman show up. I mean, nobody expected anything quite like this. They all thought you'd be the next chief. I can wait a little longer. Deverman isn't going to clean up anything in three months. After he's gone, I'll still be around. I've been waiting 16 years for this job, honey. Oh, how well I know how long it's been. I know all the qualifications, George. I got a shorthand book full of them when the committee was deciding who was to be chief. Do you know what rating they gave you? Yes, honey, I read your notes. Oh, a good officer. Knows the conditions better than anyone. Lacks 
best resolution. Edie, will you stop riding me? I can't fight City Hall. Well, some people have. Joe Manuel, for instance? For instance. Don't tell me he's bucking for the job, too. Honey, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I gotta show the chief around town, so... What would you like to do tonight? Well, uh, I think I'd like to go dancing. Where? Joe Emanuel's country club. Met our chief, have you? Not yet. Chief Durbin, Lieutenant Johnson, chief of detectives. How do you do? I was going to drop in on you, chief, when things quieted down. We'll get around, Owen. Fine. I'm taking the chief on a tour of the plan. Huh? I think you'll find it interesting. I'm available anytime you need. Thanks. Chief, uh, the next room is the records and identification room. Oh. I know, chief, that this isn't as big as you're used to, but it's the job done. Hasn't done much to clean up the town. Do you uh, think Minden is much different than New York? I don't know. I just got here. Well, human nature, Chief, isn't a matter of geography. A man wants to buy a drink or place a two-dollar bet on a horse, you're going to find a way to do it. It's the kind of thing you got to live with. Fight it. It's going to fight you back. How long have you been acting, Chief? Oh, about one month. Maybe you should have kept the job. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. Sam, this is our new chief, Chief Devilman. How do you do? Oh. I'm showing him around, so open up for you. here today, Chief. A few drunks over on the other side. This here's the women's section. Just got one customer. What's she in for? Just a transient. He's a liar. Any place I've ever been, transients are kept moving. Well, uh, her trial comes up next week, Chief. Let her out. How about them charges? I haven't heard any. Attempted to fraud a hotel manager and simple assault. Who'd she assault? <laughs> hotel manager. I hit him with a lamp that was self-defense. Yeah, it might have been at that. How about a cigarette? No smoking in the cells. Give her one. You got the keys to this place? Yes, sir, right here. Use them. I guess he's waiting for orders from you, Lieutenant. Go ahead, Sam. The chief is giving orders around here now. If you want to explain to the city attorney, he'll be in court all next week. I'll try the hotel manager. He might want to drop the charges. Well, do you like it in there? Keeps out the wild animals. Suit yourself. Oh, wait a minute. Got a match? What would I get for hitting a chief of police with a lamp? I haven't been hit by a woman yet. What hotel? The Sierra, right down the street. See the manager. Yes, sir. I don't think he's going to like the idea. He'll like it. Then what? I get picked up by the first cop who sees me for being a transient? What's this woman doing here? You own this hotel? I manage it. Well, I'm the new chief of police. Oh? I didn't know that. Glad to meet you, chief. Mm -hmm. You know I've preferred charges against this woman. Yeah. Drop them. I beg your pardon? 
You made a mistake. You're withdrawing the complaint. I'll do nothing of the sort. She ran up a bill when she couldn't pay it. I demanded payment and she attacked me. She tells it the other way around. Well, what do you expect from a two-bit? Why, you... You see, I've been brought in to clean up this town, and between here and the door, there are at least five violations of the city code. Well, that's news to me. Is it also news to you that no one under 21 can be served in a bar? No minors are ever served here. Oh. Well, then you don't mind if I check. If there are any minors in there, I know nothing about it. How about slot machines? If this is your first violation, you get your license back. Chief, if the young lady's a friend of yours, well, there's no need in having hard feelings. I'll be glad to drop the charges. Well, if you feel that way about it. Just forget the whole thing. What about my clothes? I'll have them brought down immediately. No, there's no hurry. Miss Warren won't be checking out for a couple of days. Whatever you say, Chief. Boy, get this lady's key. Your room number? 615. If there's anything else you want, Chief, just ring for room service. Great big favor, Chief. Thanks a lot. I don't want any thanks. No, I didn't think you did. I'll say one thing for you. You're better looking than that scaly manager. But I don't like you. That's all right. And I've got a bad temper, so if you're going to foreclose on the mortgage, you'd better hide all the lamps in the room. Now, look. There's a plane leaving at midnight for L.A. I want you to be on it. How? You know I'm broke. I drew a week's salary in advance. Make two reservations. Two? I'm going with you. But you just got here, Chief. And I'm just leaving. Why? Don't ask any questions. You're getting a free ride, just take it. I think you're scared. All right, so you think I'm scared. Just get those tickets, and when we get to L.A., I'll tear up your mortgage. But why don't you just get in your nice, shiny little Chief of Police car and drive away? Will Los Angeles be far enough? No, but Mexico might. Mexico. That's interesting. Don't try to figure it out. I'll see you tonight. Give it up. I'm going to buy some tobacco. Look up, Milty. You got customers. That's about when you came in. Yeah, sniff it, Milty. Sniff it. Ten bucks a bottle. What do you want? The usual. I don't carry it. You ever notice how these little guys talk hard? All talk, but hard. You gotta keep up the payments, Milty. It's due. Let's have it. I told you the last time I wasn't paying any more protection, and you can tell that to Joe Emanuel. Who's he? Maybe you guys haven't heard it yet, but we got a new chief of police in town. Yeah, we heard. I'm getting my protection from him in the future. If you guys are thinking of wrecking my store, just try it. I'll have the cops all over you. Don't he talk hard? You wouldn't be so tough if you weren't right across the street from that city hall. Best location in town. Dad. Dad, loan me $20. That mail later. But, Dad, I need a new sweater. And there's a dreamy cashmere down at Bendel's for only $19.75. If you loan it to me, I'll mind the store for a couple of days. Introduce me to your daughter, Milty. I thought she was just a kid. I'll come back later, after you've swept the store out. Leave her alone. Me and your old man was just having a bet. I said that this knife is sharper than a razor. And he bet me 30 bucks that wasn't. Now, what do you think, baby? Do I win that bet? Yes. Yes. I guess you owe me 30 bucks, Milty. Give me the money. Please, Dad, pay him. Here's the money. Put it on the counter, Milty. I'll be back next week at the same time. Talk hard again, Milty. I like persuading you. <laughs> Angie. Hello? May I speak to Chief, whatever his name is? No, the new Chief of Police. Where is he? Right here. What do you want me for? How'd you get here so fast? Wasn't quick. I've been out of tobacco for a week. What do you smoke? Best when I can get it. You get the best right here, Chief. It's on the house. Why? I'm buying Goodwill. That's why. 
That's the way you get along in this town. You stay friendly with everybody. If you can't lick them, you join them. I'm Milty the Joiner. I sign up for everything. All right, you got trouble, too. What trouble, Chief? I might take the policeman's benefit, pay my dues in the club. I got no troubles. Well, you talk like a man who's looking for some. I don't know. Maybe you're the guy for the job. You're big enough. Me, I weigh 130 pounds wet. Never won a fight in my life. Used to, you didn't have to win. You got respect for standing up for your rights. Look, Milty, either make your point or shut up. I'm tired of paying off those bums, and I'm not speaking just for myself. Half the businessmen in this town are paying for protection to Joe Emanuel, but they ain't got the guts to tell you that, so I stuck my neck out again. You take it from there. You'll have plenty of people behind you, Chief, but they ain't gonna show themselves until they see how much guts you got. Bring up your sail, Milty. town for you. Well, the charges have been dropped. The girl's leaving town. Well, that uh, doesn't make any difference to me. But you better get back to your office. You've got your first case. Can't you handle it? Well, it's homicide. Somebody phoned the state police barracks, said they found a body about 35 miles out of town. Who is it? The name's Mike Mason. He's not from around here, though. Well, it's a state police case. What do they want from us? Usual cooperation. She's only been dead about three hours. Oh, they think the killer's here in town. We better go, huh? What about the lab test? Okay. Get it to me as soon as it comes in. Right. I'll be in Chief Deverman's office till I hear from you. A couple hours, we ought to have a ballistics report. By morning, we should have a pretty good lead on the car. Be out of the state by now. No, I don't think so. You have to drive up a dirt road to get to those trees, and all the tire tracks lead back to Minden. Of course, he might have doubled back, but I don't think he had time. You uh, set up roadblocks? On well, all the highways. We've got them bottled up in Minden, Chief. All you got to do is flush them out. Shouldn't be much trouble once we get to make it a car. This is your first day, isn't it, Chief? Yeah. You uh, mind if I make a suggestion? Shapes up to me like a professional job. You probably heard about Joe Emanuel. I'd keep steak out in the country club. Yeah, that's a good idea. Take care of it, Cadell. Yeah, right, right away, Chief. Office? Oh, of course. Good morning. Won't you join me? Why, yes, thank you. Well, I suppose everybody's been asking how you like your new job, so I won't. Oh, what do you have? A secretary's breakfast, orange juice, black coffee, and a cigarette. I'm afraid that's all I can face this morning. Thanks. It's been a long night. Yes. I read about the murder. Your first day on the new job, too. I understand the dead man isn't from Minden. So they tell me. Oh, I'm going to be on this stuff all day, just keeping awake. Hey, I must give you lots of overtime, huh? That sounds like a dirty crack, Chief. Now, if anybody kept Mayor Langley up till 3 a.m., he'd never show up at all. Why can one stay up that late in Minden? Nowhere. We have a 12 o'clock ordinance. You have to go outside the city limits. Country club? 
Oh, shameful, isn't it? And you can see most of our leading citizens there any Saturday night. Oh, I didn't want to be discouraging, Chief, but that's what you're up against. You know, people like Joe Emanuel couldn't possibly stay in business if people didn't support them. Where is it? Country Club? <laughs> Just drive down Main Street. You'll come to it. Thanks. Are you going there? Sooner or later. You will excuse me. Yes, hmm? <laughs> and thanks for breakfast. It's this flim flam game you play. Where do I find Joe Emanuel? Tears that never cry. You try our memories on for size. Chief Deverman, isn't it? That's right. This isn't New York, Chief. I know. News gets around here a little faster. Why don't we go up to my office? Oh, uh, just go on singing. I'll be able to hear you. Be very smart. Yet I knew from the start. Will you take that little lower, please? I'm uh, auditioning for the floor show. I think this one has the job. Beautiful girl, isn't she? Yeah, beautiful. This way. On false-hearted schemes When I know with each day It's this flim-flam game you play There. Now I can keep one ear on her and one on you. Now then, what can I do for you, Chief? I want out. <laughs> you don't waste any time, do you, Chief? I haven't got any. The city hall's about to fall in on me. You know I'm not a cop as well as I do. If you're not Devil, who are you? Mike Mason. How'd you get into a spot like this? I walked up to the wrong car. Devilman's body fell right in my lap. I was still bleeding and I got some blood on me. So you panicked? Maybe I did. But I'd just been tossed off a freight train with nothing in my pocket but a hole. That could convict me right there. I had one chance. Get out of there before the body was found. I got as far as Minden City Hall. What can I do for you, Mason? Get off my back. I'd have been in Mexico by now if you hadn't taped the state cops off to Devman's body. I did that. Huh? You or whoever did your killing for you. If, uh, if I do help you, what have you got to offer? Well, for the time being, I'm still chief of police. That ought to be worth something to you. No, at the moment, I don't see how. You own somebody in the department. Maybe I can fix it for him to have my job after I go. Might be something in that. I'll think it over. And while you're thinking about it, stay away from that phone. One more call and I'm a dead man. I'll go this far. Whether we make a deal or not, you'll be the first to know. Okay? Well, it's a stay of execution anyway. I know I should learn One side out of two May not be very smart Yet I knew from the start In this flim-flam game I lost my
my heart. Hey, Gertrude, some rock and roll. Rock and roll. Well, thank you very much, Miss Warren. I hope you weren't too busy to listen. Not at all. I think you sang very well. That'll be all, Maestro. No more auditions today. So you want to hear some rock and roll, huh, Nicky? Why don't you sit down and play? I was just ripping the guy. Sit down. Go on. Play. You know I can't play, boss. Never heard you try, Nicky. Try it. You're right, Nicky. You can't play. Ow! Don't pick on the piano player, Nicky. I don't want him hurt. He didn't get hurt. He slugged me. That's what I mean. He might have broken his hand. Now beat it. All right, boss. All right. You know, I... Uh, I think you might be just right for this room. When do I start? Tonight, if, uh, if you've got the clothes. I'll bring some dresses in for you to look at. Good. Eight o'clock. By the way, have you met our new chief of police, Mr. Deverman? Miss Warren. How do you do? How do you do? First show's at 10 o'clock. Give yourself plenty of time. Drop in any time, Chief. You're always welcome. Thanks. And, uh, I'll, uh, see you later. Hmm? I lift in the town. Sure. I can't figure you out. What are you trying to do? Stay alive. I think you must be crazy. You had a ticket? Why didn't you use it? I wish I knew. I guess I'm crazy. You don't owe me anything. You still hold the mortgage. Don't be a fool. Get out of town while you can. This whole place is going to go up like a bomb. I'm holding it together with one hand. Is that why you went to see Joe Emanuel? Joe Emanuel. On Broadway, he'd be a two-bit bookie. Here he's the big man. I had to crawl to him for an extra day of life. He holds the mortgage on me. Let's go upstairs. Police found a corpse last night. It was in the paper this morning. So was your picture. Joe Emanuel killed him. Oh, he didn't pull the trigger. He didn't have to. But somebody who works for Joe has a hot gun, and I want to know who it is. And I work for Joe. Paula, I don't know how you'd find out. I think you'd be crazy to even try. Even if you do owe me something, it isn't that big. But you had a chance to leave town last night, and you didn't take it, if that means anything. I'd better see what dresses I have for tonight. That man's name was Lou Deverman. Menden was borrowing him for three months because he was supposed to be tough. I don't know what happened. Maybe he didn't live up to his press clippings. Maybe he underrated Joe Emanuel. He stopped him 35 miles out of town with a gun. It's a stupid thing to do. Could have finished Joe for good. But I had to walk right into the middle of it. Will you help me? I'll think it over in the shower.
can't see the year. So that's what a Judas kid tastes like. I didn't kill anybody. Didn't you? Somebody got to get close to Devon and only a woman could do that. I didn't kill anybody. Okay. So you didn't pull the trigger. But you must trap them. That's the same thing. I was in jail. I have an alibi. Sure. You don't need it. You're home free. I can't prove a thing. Don't you think I know that? Why do you think I put the sweater out for you to see? I knew Deverman was dead when you walked in wearing his name. What's the answer? You were there. And if you saw Deverman, you saw the mate to this. I have more sweaters, Mike. I could have burned this one. What the hell are you trying to do? Right now, trying to take a shower. Either come in or go out. <laughs> Finish your shower. Mike, the killer's name is Frankie Urbano. They never called him anything but Frankie, but his car registration had that name on it. How did you get into this? A man came to see me in jail. He said he was a lawyer, and if I'd cooperate, he could get me a suspended sentence. All I had to do was help discourage an eastern gangster from moving into Minden. I'd say he's pretty discouraged right now. They told me the idea was to meet him outside the city and turn him around. If he refused, Urbana was to beat him up. Telling it now, it sounds pretty phony, but in jail, it didn't. Go ahead. I was supposed to be seeing a doctor. Urbano picked me up on the corner. All I had to do was stand on the highway and get a ride with a tan Pontiac bearing New York plates. Everything was working for them. There might have been more than one New York car, or Deverman might not have stopped. Why do you suppose they picked you? Well, he stopped. We pulled down a dirt road to have a drink. He never saw Urbano coming. I got out and walked away. There were two shots. Urbano came running out to his car. I remembered my sweater, but he wouldn't let me go back for it. An hour later, I was right back where I started. I never saw that lawyer again. That figures. If the murder came home to Joe, they could pin it on to you. And Mason came to town. They have more pigeons than they can feed. My, I've still got two plane tickets. Be the shortest ride we ever took, honey. State cops have a lock on this town. Could you identify Urbano? I helped him kill a man. What kind of a car was he driving? A Jaguar. That ought to do it. Mike, you're not a policeman. You'll be killed. I'm no hero. I'll send Cadell. Good. I'll get right on it. Right. You want to see me, Chief? Sam, how long have you been jailer? Ooh, 18, 20 years, I guess. Got a family? Yes, I've got a wife and two kids. Then you need this job. Oh, yeah, sure. Say, Chief, there's nothing wrong, is there? You're, you're not figuring to make any changes, are you? Well, that's going to be up to you. I'm going to ask a question and you get one answer. If it isn't the right one, you're through right now. I'll tell you anything you want to know, Chief. You can count on. Was Paula Warren out of her cell at any time yesterday? Let me see now. Let me see. Yesterday, uh... Put your keys on the desk right now. No, no, no. Now, wait a minute, Chief. I, I don't want any trouble. I, uh, just, just thinking back. This isn't anything that requires thinking about. Either way, you should have had a fast answer. I'm not playing games. I don't want any trouble, Chief. I just do what I'm told around here. It wasn't up to me to see whether or not that was legal. How long was she out of her cell? Three, maybe four hours. Just long enough to uh, see a doctor, and then we, uh... Oh, uh, I'll drop back later. Oh, no, no, Lieutenant, I want to talk to you. All right, Sam, that's all. Lieutenant, how would you like to earn a promotion? <laughs> you promote me, Chief, and that chair would be mighty crowded. Somebody's got to fill it when I go. Might as well be you. Chief, do you really think you can clean up a minute in three months? Get the top man, the others will go fast enough. 
I think we can pin a murder rap on Joe Emanuel. Joe doesn't kill people. He calls a shot. That body the state troopers found. Mike Mason? One of Joe's boys killed him. Chief, you hear that kind of noise every time there's a $3 stick up and nobody ever turns in any evidence. I'll have the evidence. You pick up Frankie Urbano, he drives a Jaguar. Chief, it's a matter for the state police. There's nobody by that name in this town. You know everybody here? Well, everybody I need to. <laughs> you see, Chief, this is a small town. But you're all my life. It's been 16 years on the force. Now, if a cigarette machine turns up missing, I can tell you where to find it. I may not be able to prove it, but I'll know who done it. Now, there's no Frank Urbano in Minden. What about the country club? No, no, he's not there either. I know everybody who takes orders from Joe. Of course, I won't say that Urbano wasn't imported to do the job. But when he finished, he, he got into town real quick. Oh, you uh, want an APB on him? Yeah. Okay, Chief. I know the police department here isn't as good as it might be. I see a lot of things, but there's nothing I can do about it. You're not going to lose your job, Sam. You know, there's no record of that girl being out of her cell. After all, I've got my orders to keep my mouth shut. Sam, is there anybody in this department who doesn't work for Joe Emanuel? Yeah, there's, uh, there's Lieutenant Johnson. Yeah, I met him yesterday. How sure are you? The car he drives is seven years old. Okay, Sam, that's all. Yes? Oh, Chief Deverman, this is Edith in Mayor Langley's office. He would like you to come to his office immediately. Oh, by the way, it's on the top floor at the end of the corridor. Okay, I'll be right up. Oh, Chief, go right in. The mayor's waiting. Thanks. Have you seen today's Times Union? No, I've been so busy. Not even your picture on the front page? No. Well, everyone else has. Including this gentleman over here. Well, Mr. Andrews? I'll say it now and I'll stand in court. This is the guy. I don't know what he calls himself or what he's doing here. All I'm saying is that yesterday was a bum stealing a ride on my train. Well, I booted him off not five miles from where the state troopers found that body. The dead man seems to be identified as Mike Mason. Does that happen to be your name? Yes. I knew he was a bad one. There was another bum in the car. I let him back on. But this one was looking for trouble. Was he armed at the time? <laughs> I never waited to find out. The moment I seen he was an agitator, I heaved him off. Mr. Andrews, you've done us a very great service. This was a shocking affair. I don't mind telling you, it rocked me a bit, too. You know, I was just shooting the breeze with a break. He only happened to have a minute in paper. I seen this guy's mug on the front page. I hopped the eastbound, got off here. And we're very grateful that you did. Thank you. Thank you very much. The moment this gets out, a hobo sworn in as chief of police. How did a thing like this happen? Ask him. The first thing to do is get Lieutenant Cadell up here. Call Lieutenant Jocelyn instead. If I were you, Mason, I wouldn't say anything more than I had to. You'll have your chance soon enough in court. Lieutenant Cadell will resume as acting chief. If you have any statement to make, I'm sure he'll... Lieutenant Cadell, please. This is the mayor. Well, find him. This is urgent. All right, all right. Send up Lieutenant Jocelyn at once. Personally, there's only one point I'd like cleared up. We all know Joe Emanuel's responsible for Deverman's death. The point is, can we bring it home to him? Only if Mason cooperates. You're as good as in a death cell right now. You've got nothing to lose. You might. We can't promise anything. But you might beat the chair by cooperating with us now. 
I didn't kill Devilman. He was dead when I found him. Just tell us about Joe Emanuel. I never heard of Joe Emanuel until yesterday. But today you're at the country club to see him. I run a newspaper, Mason. It's my business to know what goes on in this town. I went out to the country club to see Joe Emanuel to make a deal. To buy myself a little time. A few days. A couple of lucky breaks. An honest cop. And I might have cleaned up your crummy city in spite of myself. Lieutenant Joslin, we have a nasty situation here. This man killed and robbed Deverman and then impersonated him. And was sworn in as chief of police. You're sure about this? He's admitted he's not Deverman. I don't think you'll have much of a job proving he killed Deverman. All I can do is book him on suspicion. Lieutenant, before you take him, the committee is interested in who hired this man to commit murder. If he'll tell us that, I'm prepared to use all influence of my newspaper to save him from the chair. Now, Roy. I don't like making deals with hard killers any better than you do. But it's the only way we're going to beat these racketeers. If this man can give us the evidence we need to convict Joe Emanuel, let's forget the source and take it. What do you think, Lieutenant? It's been done before. Well, Mason, it's all in your hands. Don't you think I'd trade a murder rap for perjury any day in the week? But that's what it would be, perjury. And I couldn't prove it. Sure, I know Joe Emanuel had Devilman killed. I even could give you the name of his killer. But you couldn't find him. I even have a witness. And she has an alibi that even she can't break. Does that mean you won't make a deal? No, 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 no. I'll make a deal. I'll bring you the real murderer and hang him around Joe Emanuel's neck. But I can't do it from a cell. You want to be turned loose? I want to remain chief of police. Chief of police? That's the most insolent suggestion I've ever listened to in my life. You'd be out of here in two hours. The state police had this town buttoned up. I couldn't get out. I wouldn't tolerate such an arrangement. Just a minute, gentlemen. You know, I don't think you're stupid enough to think we'd accept such an arrangement unless you've got something to back it up. I have. Joe Emanuel thinks he owns me. If I get out of line, all he has to do, he thinks, is to pick up the phone and tip you off. All right, he does, and I'm still chief. What's he going to do? Why does he have to do anything? Well, the point is, if I start cleaning up this town, he's going to have to move and move fast. You ought to know that. He took care of your last chief. Chief was killed in a car accident. Oh, sure. Sure, he, he accidentally drove over a cliff. Just like Devilman accidentally stopped a bullet. The point is, Joe will have to do something. Suppose you do lure him back to town. There's not much future in that for you, Mason. Well, Joe might miss the gas chamber, never does. He might not import the same man. Do you think that you can pick up a killer in an unemployment office? Joe has got one. He's done a job for him before. He'll do it again. If I bring him in, you can offer him the same deal you offered me. Personally, I'm not at all satisfied you aren't the hired killer. What have you got to lose? You can reel me in any time. The only way I would consider it, such an arrangement must never leave this room. What do you think, Lieutenant? Shall we accept? Frankly, I don't think it makes much difference, gentlemen. What do you mean? Either way, Mason's going to come up dead. <laughs> Such a fool, too easy to rule in the same foolish flim flam game of love you're playing. Why build my dreams on false hearted schemes when I know with each day it's this flim flam game you play? In your eyes I see such lies Tears that never cry You try our memories on for size Then kiss them all goodbye I know I should learn One sigh out of turn May not be very smart Yet I knew from the start in this flim flam game I lost my heart I'm such a fool Too easy to rule In this same foolish flim flam game Of love you're playing Why build my dreams On false hearted schemes When I know 
with each day it's this flim flam game you play in your eyes i see such lies tears that never cry you try our memories on for size then kiss them all goodbye i know i should learn one side out of turn may not be Joe, very smart no, no, yet this is, i this knew is very important. from the start in this flim flam game i love my heart. Okay, let's have it. There's something screwy going on, Joe. The cops are knocking us off all over town. Yeah, which ones? Well, the hog shop on eight, that one first. Then they closed Benny's horse parlor. And after that, they even raided that hot car drop. What have you done about it? What could I do, Joe? It happened so fast. We no sooner heard of one place going and another coming. And that phone, brother, was going off like a fire station. All right, all right. But who's behind it? Who's pushing it? I talked to him, cop. He didn't know. He said the orders came right from the chief's office. Well, you get that smart lawyer out of bed and tell him I want everybody bailed out. Maybe that new chief is tougher than we thought. He's neither tough nor stupid. It's somebody else. Want me to circulate around town and see what I turn up? No, I'll know before you get out of the club. You just get to work on that lawyer. I don't want anybody to Hold on, I'm going to find out. Now, let me talk to Chief Depperman. What do you mean he's not taking any calls? I want to make a complaint. Never mind my name. What kind of a police department is this anyway? Mason's not taking any calls. Are you sure he's still there? Well, I want him out. Tonight. Well, he killed Deverman, didn't he? Make the arrest yourself. Right. Mason? <laughs> yeah, that's your real name, isn't it? Mason, not Deverman. You know, you never did act like a cop. I thought there was something phony about you right from the start. When the state troopers brought in that body, I did a little checking. Like to hear it? Sure. Michael David Mason, age 34, height 6 foot 2, brown eyes, black hair. Everything checked, Mason? Everything but the name. Uh -huh. Paratrooper for three years, operated a used car lot in New York. Went pro. Last seen riding a boxcar to Los Angeles. There you are, boys, all right in front of you. Got ourselves a ringer. He killed the real Deverman and stole his identification papers. In fact, Deverman's car is in our garage right now. Mason, the state police want to see you. Cadelia suspended. <laughs> You're a little late with that, aren't you? I'm recommending the police board bring you up on charges of bribery, graft, and collusion with Joe Emanuel. All right, put him in a cell, book him on suspicion of murder. Stand up and be counted, boys. Who are you with, Cadell or the police department? I said put him in a cell. What's the matter with you guys? You got nuts? Why, this guy's not the chief. The mayor says he is. I got the proof. It's all there. The committee says he's chief. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? I'm going to do plenty about it. You're wasting your time, Cadell. You can't fight City Hall. All right, you're now lieutenant of police. Okay. All right, fellas, come on, I'll show you what I want done. Getting the small operators. Joe isn't feeling it. We're knocking over everybody we can. We don't have evidence on the big stuff. Well, get some evidence. You're a cop. So are you. Take it easy. We're getting there. 
Joe couldn't operate at all if you hadn't made some payoffs in the right places. If we don't watch where we step, somebody's going to start a be sorry for Joe camp. He's got to start hurting. We're aggravating. We won't take much more. The trouble is, we don't know when he'll make his move. You may never know about it. And he saved the state some money. That's one way to look at it. Want somebody to ride back to town with you? No, it's daylight. I'll be all right. See you, Art. Okay. beginning to fight back. They tried to kill you? Yeah. The wrong car went over the cliff. Oh, Mike, give it up. You don't have a chance. Make a run for it. Yeah, there's no place to run, honey. If there was, I'd never make it. Who tried to kill you? Urbano? Cadell. He came close enough. Now, go call in the first team. That's the idea. You don't have a chance. I've seen our battle work, remember? There's only one thing in this world he can do, kill, and he does it better than anybody else. What are you trying to do, Scammy? How long do you think it'll be? A couple of days. Is there no way out? Not for me. All bets are off, honey. Get the best deal you can. I can take care of myself. I know that. What about the mortgage? I tore it up. Something bothering you? Uh, you. That one of your new dresses? Customers seem to like it. So does the boss. One of these days you're gonna run out of those little tricks. Just because you buy a girl a dress. Twelve of them. You were sweet. What do you want? How about raising my salary to three fifty? That's business. Do you think I'm an amateur? I sing for a living. Joe, I think I've got an idea. Keep it. Well, you might listen to it. I listen to Cadell. That's enough. If I do it my way, it'll be done right. Urbano's coming back. Oh, that's great. Good welcome home party for old good old Frankie. Aren't you supposed to be entertaining the customers? Don't worry about Paula. What's there to worry? Nothing. Nothing at all. Paula's a good girl. She just wants to get rich in a hurry. Frankie will be coming in on the midnight train. Somebody better be at the station to meet him. Yes, yeah, sure. Come on, Slater. So you want three fifty a week? All right, you've got it. Now, do I look any better to you? No. Well, what the devil do you want? What have you got to offer? Me, as a man. Till the customers get tired of me, you hold another audition. If I need a new canary, I'll get one. But you'll still be here, singing just for me. Took you long enough to get the idea. Oh, 
I'll send one of the boys over to the hotel to get your things. I'll be back as soon as I sing a song. I'll be waiting. You must be getting soft in the head. You can't trust that dame. What's she going to do? Run to Mason? She's heading for the nearest telephone right now. You must be wrong. But keep an eye on her anyway. Yeah, sure. Can you do it tonight? Yeah. I want Mason to disappear permanently. Sure. What are you waiting for? The money. You'll get it on delivery. Besides, you didn't earn your pay on Deberman. He's dead. You didn't have to dump him on my doorstep. The idea was to do it a few hundred miles away from here. He was tough. I had to do it when I had a chance. He was stupid. I don't know why I put up with guys like you and Potter. You got so many brains. Why do you keep that canary around? Paula? She's that dame that set up Deverman for me. I just found out Urbano's coming in on the midnight train. Where are you calling from? The phone booth by the bridge. Did anybody see you? No. Get over in the woods near the road and hide. I'll be out there in 15 minutes to pick you up. I'll blink my headlights three times. If Urbano's on that train, we'll get him. Now stay out of sight. Promise. Did you hear that? Urbano's coming. He's not in. coming by train. Take another look at it, Mason. Do you think he'd come to Menden, kill you, and then sit around waiting for a train out? Uh -uh. He'll have a getaway car. Yeah, Joe could give him one. Make a lousy cop. Joe isn't dumb enough to tie himself to a killer in any way. If you want a professional opinion, I think Urbano's already here. And if you'd like some good advice, don't go near that girl. Why not? Because wherever she is, Urbano isn't far away. You're being flim-flammed, my friend. The whole situation smells just like cheese. Well, I can't take a chance. If she's on the level, they'll kill her. And if she isn't, they'll kill you. What am I supposed to do? Wait for a coroner's report? No, just don't be so eager to get your brains blown out. Give me 20 minutes and I'll have a cop behind every tree. What if it doesn't work? Who knows? Urbano's going to call the time and the place. All we can do is try to be on hand. 30 cops stumbling around in the dark will sound like a stampede. One man will stand a better chance. Well, I'm not going to ask any of my men to go in there alone. Urbano's a professional killer. I don't want any dead heroes or weeping widows. But it may be our only chance to get Urbano. Joey Emanuel is my pigeon. And if I don't get him tonight, I'll get him another time. Because I've got plenty of it. Yeah, and I'm running out of it. I'll trade you this for a gun. You know how to use one? Oh, that's a paratrooper for three years. Just in case. Look, I'll give you one hour from the time you leave this office, and then I'm moving in with every cop I've got. Scared? I couldn't even spit right now. Good. A scared man doesn't take chances. Tip them off, Frankie. You be back. Cocker on the head. We'll take it to Joe. He wants to handle this himself.
think the war is over. Hello? Okay. Frankie? Yeah. What's going on out there? I shot him in the head. What? Your boyfriend just got his brains blown out. Where's my money? Where are you calling from? The phone at the bridge. Wait there. I'll bring it to you. Hang up that phone. Walk up to this tree. Stick your arms forward. All the way.
Chief, there's still a little matter of getting clear with the law. But I just happen to know a judge in town. Said. You better hang on to those plane tickets. Okay, Chief. 